On September 1, 1939, Germany invaded Poland, and World War II began. This country is at war with Germany. Two days later, Britain and France declared war on Germany. After April 1940, Germany conquered most of Northern Europe in a blitzkrieg, and by June 1940, after the Allied forces withdrew from Dunkirk to England, France also surrendered. The German Wehrmacht High Command wanted to cut off Britain's sea transport routes with its submarine fleet and force Britain to surrender. Germany's greatest weapon was the U-boat, a submarine that had begun to show success in attacking Atlantic shipping lanes from 1939 to 1941. In the spring of 1940, when Germany occupied France and Norway, and new U-boat bases were established in the English Channel and along the Atlantic coast, the area of attack was significantly expanded. At the time, the merchant fleet sailed the Atlantic in convoy system, escorted by warships and aircraft. However, Britain devoted more resources to the defense of the mainland, and the number of warships and aircraft escorting merchant ships was drastically reduced. Germany attacked the convoys with a strategy known as Wolfpack using U-boats, and by March 1941 a total of over 3 million tons of merchant ships had been sunk, causing a sharp increase in damage to Allied forces. U-boats were sinking large numbers of merchant ships carrying food, munitions, and oil from North America to Britain, and in 1941, it was even said that these sinking would cause Britain to starve in a matter of months. The use of codes by own forces and the deciphering of codes by enemy forces were key to the outcome of the battle. The code messages sent by the Germans were called Enigma because they were created through the cipher machine Enigma. Because the codes at Britain's naval headquarters had been deciphered by the Germans, the U-boats were able to learn the details of the convoy's sailing routes, assembly points, and sailing dates and times, and sunk a number of Allied vessels. Britain, on the other hand, had not been able to decipher the German Navy's codes. However, it was imperative to decipher German codes in order to stop the spread of damage caused by U-boats. The U-boat Wolfpack had achieved great success, but it had one fatal weakness. The operation was to attack the same convoy not with a single submarine, but with several submarine groups. To act as a submarine group, the U-boats had to transmit the positions of their own ships to the command center. Thus, if Britain could decipher the German Navy's codes, it could pinpoint where in the Atlantic the U-boats were assembling. Once the assembly points were known, convoys bound for Britain could avoid the submarine fleet. Enigma looked like a typewriter with a combination of electrical and mechanical components, battery-powered and portable. The main body of Enigma consisted of three units, a keyboard for entering letters, a scrambler consisting of three rotors and a reflector, and a lamp board that displayed the encrypted letters with a lamp. In addition, there was a plug board on the front of the Enigma main unit, and by setting a cable with a connector on this plug board, the wiring of any letter could be replaced. When a plain German message is typed on Enigma's keyboard, the letters on the lamp board light up one by one. Each bulb on the lamp board was electrically connected to a letter on the keyboard, but the wiring went through a number of rotating rotors, and the connection constantly changed with the movement of the rotors. The assistant recorded it by hand, encrypted it, and transmitted it in Morse code. Thus, if you were to type A, 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 A on the keyboard, the lamp board would display different characters one after another. This constantly changing pattern of connections made the Enigma extremely difficult to decipher. Information on Enigma's settings was transmitted as follows. Each means the number of the rotor to be used, the position of the ring setting, how to connect the plugs, and the starting position of each rotor. Following these instructions, the Enigma is set up as follows. First, select a given rotor from the five rotors, and set the rotors in the specified order. Next, set the starting position of the rotors. Connect the plugs as per the specified alphabet combination according to the letters of the alphabet that are typed in the plug holes on the plug board. After this has been set up, typing the plain text will cause the encrypted letter lamp to light up.
When these letters are written and lined up, the message is encrypted. Germany had begun communicating with Enigma in 1926, but Britain and France could not decipher the code. Although they knew how the Enigma machine itself worked, there was no way to decipher it if they did not know the settings. The reason for this was that the number of Enigma settings was astronomical, when combined with the way the rotors, the way the rotors were lined up, and the way the plug boards were put together. And the settings changed every 24 hours, with billions of possible combinations every day. When the German threat waned after the First World War and Britain and France shelved their Enigma deciphering efforts, it was Poland that was doing its best to decipher the Enigma. Poland was located in a place threatened by two powerful nations, Germany and the Soviet Union, and access to information was a lifeline. In 1931, France provided Poland with information obtained from Hans Theodor Schmidt, who worked in the German Code Bureau. Poland was able to obtain instructions on the use of Enigma, and the encryption key used by the Germans. According to these instructions, the Enigma settings were to be changed daily, and the way they were set up was called a daily key. Instead of changing all of this daily, only the start of the rotor was to be changed. In other words, only three letters would be sent. In fact, it was also found that these three characters are sent twice, for a total of six characters, and that these six characters are placed at the top of the communication to prevent signaling errors on the communication or human error by the operator. This was an important clue to deciphering the Enigma, but not only the Germans, but also Britain and France were unaware of this weakness in the Enigma. Marian Rajewski, a Polish mathematician, was the first to successfully decipher the Enigma. Rajewski invented a way to intercept German transmissions and determine where the rotor started at the beginning of the transmission. As a result, Poland was able to read encrypted German messages from 1933 to 1939. In the summer of 1939, Poland's imminent war with Germany made further decryption impossible due to human and financial limitations. Poland turned over the results of its own research, including Enigma replicas and the Enigma decoder, Bomba, which Rajewski had developed in 1938, to the cryptographic authorities in Britain and France and asked them to continue their work. In the fall of 1939, Britain established a special division of code-breaking, Ultra, in Bletchley Park, which was linked to London by rail and main road. At Bletchley Park, mathematicians, linguists, chess masters, military personnel, and many women providing support were decoding intercepted messages that German operators had encrypted using an electric cipher machine. Among the many people who worked at Bletchley Park, who made important contributions to the Enigma decipherment was Alan Turing. Turing was looking for another new way to decipher the Enigma, not the deciphering method of analyzing the first six letters that Rajewski had discovered. He believed that the Germans, realizing the weakness of the Enigma, would change their method of code transmission. In May 1940, it became a reality, and the Enigma system was fundamentally changed, making it impossible to use the method Rajewski had used to discover the starting position of the rotor for Enigma decoding. Turing, who was thinking of new methods, was looking at deciphered coded telegrams, and noticed that the Germans would send weather information in coded form after 6 o'clock a.m. each day. This text was always sent at 6 o'clock a.m., meaning weather information. This part stands for weather information, these are extra letters added on purpose, null is zero, and these represent the number six. In other words, this signal means, weather information 0600, weather information at six o'clock. Since this string appears in all of the ciphers typed after six o'clock, Turing realized that if he could locate this string, he would be able to find the clue to the cipher. When a connection was discovered between a piece of plain text and a cipher text such as this, the combination was called a crib. In addition to weather information, these cribs included congratulatory telegrams sent simultaneously from various German military headquarters on Hitler's birthday, and short telegrams at the end of the day from troops who had passed peacefully and sent out nothing to report at the end of the day. Enigma had an even more important weakness. In Enigma, a letter typed in plain text never becomes a letter of the cipher, 
which means that if you type A, the cipher will never be converted to A. This is because the structure of Enigma was designed so that typing A would cut the wiring leading to the cipher A. Using this property, we can put a canonical string of characters that informs us of weather information under an encrypted string, and if any of the characters are the same, we know that this part of the string is not this string. Next, we can shift the characters one by one to see if they are the same, and if there is a string that does not match at all, we can presume that it is probably the converted string. In this way, we could make a list of which characters were converted and how. Turing designed a system of three Enigma machines that were linked together to automatically discover the connection between the letters, and the lights would come on when they were complete. This machine was named BOMB. The operation of the bomb was automated, meaning that all one had to do was prepare the bomb for the combination of rotors, move them all together, and wait until the light came on to see the result. The standard British bomb machine was essentially 36 Enigma machines wired together, this way, the bomb machine would simulate several Enigma machines at once. Most Enigma machines had three rotors and to represent this in the bomb, each of the Enigma simulators in the bomb had three drums, one for each rotor. At each position of the drums, the configuration would be tested to see if the configuration led to a logical contradiction, ruling out that setting. If the test did not lead to a contradiction, the machine would stop and the decoder would note that configuration as a candidate solution. Then, the machine is restarted and more configurations are tested. These tests would narrow down the list of possible configurations and the candidate solutions would be tested further to eliminate ones that wouldn't work. The first bomb, Victory, was completed in March 1940, but improvements were made, and when the second bomb, Agnes, was completed in August, the bomb decoding operation began in earnest. The decoding of Enigma, which until then had been a time-consuming manual process, was greatly accelerated by the bomb. However, even when deciphering was progressing well, it was often interrupted when the Germans made new changes to the code. In March 1941, when the British forces overran the German armed trawler Krebs, they found and seized a set of rotor wheels for an Enigma machine and its code books on board the ship, which were used to decode the intercepted German Navy Enigma could now be deciphered. This led to the idea of a forced attack operation to capture a German weather observation ship and take the Enigma machine and cipher keys on board. In May 1941, HMS Somali captured the German weather ship Munchen. The Munchen's radio officer immediately threw the Enigma machine and cipher keys overboard, but some material was forgotten to be discarded, and the Britain military was able to seize the Enigma settings for the following month. However, to prevent the Germans from detecting their intentions, Britain immediately sent out disturbing information, and when it became clear that the Germans were unaware of the British operation, they further captured the German weather ship Lauenburg and seized documents related to the ciphers. Again, the Germans were unaware that important information about the Enigma had fallen into the hands of Britain's crypt analysts. However, the information obtained from the weather observation ships was not enough to decipher the codes used by the U-boats. The Enigma used by the German Navy was far more complex than those used by the Army and Air Force. Admiral Donitz, who commanded the submarine force, considered the Navy's Enigma to be of the highest importance, and he made sure that his crew would dispose of the Enigma cipher machine and sink the ship themselves if there was any danger of capture. Therefore, it was considered difficult to actually board the U-boat and seize the Enigma machine. However, the opportunity soon presented itself, and the deciphering of the Navy Enigma was rapidly underway. On May 9, 1941, five days after the capture of Munchen, Convoy OB-318 was attacked by U-110 off Greenland. U-110 sank two ships in a torpedo attack, but was heavily damaged by attacks from the destroyer Bulldog and other ships in the convoy, and was forced to surface. A search party from the destroyer Bulldog boarded the abandoned U-110, and, upon investigating inside, discovered a cipher machine in the communications room, which they removed. The Enigma machine, rotor and setting, and two cases of codebooks were then seized, and the findings were delivered to the cryptographers at Bletchley Park. 
The Enigma machines and related documents seized from weather ships and the U-110, enabled Britain to decipher the Enigma almost as fast as the German side. From June to August 1941, the damage caused by U-boats was greatly reduced. In September 1941, three German U-boats were attacked by the British submarine HMS Clyde in Terrafall Bay. The appearance of the British submarines at the perfect moment in an area of the sea where British submarines rarely appear, led German Admiral Donitz to suspect that Britain was somehow trying to find out the location of the German ships and attacking them. Admiral Donitz, who doubted the security of the cipher, ordered improvements to Enigma. The new Enigma, with four rotors, was put into use in February 1942. In early 1942, Bletchley Park codebreakers were decoding about 39,000 intercepted messages per month. However, the introduction of the new Enigma made the deciphering process extremely difficult, and from August to November, the damage to Allied ships by U-boats increased, while U-boat losses decreased. The Germans had succeeded in deciphering the codes of the British convoys, and as a result of the dramatic increase in damage, more British ships were being sunk and not built in time. But once again, Britain had a stroke of luck. On 30 October 1942, four destroyers attacked U-boat, U-559, near the Israeli port of Haifa. After sustaining heavy damage, U-559 was inevitably forced to surface. Three Royal Navy sailors boarded U-559 and recovered the U-boat's Enigma key configuration, including the encryption key used for weather reports. With the acquisition of this codebook material, the codebreakers at Bletchley Park who had been unable to read the four-rotor U-boat Enigma for 10 months since its introduction by the German Navy at the beginning of 1942, understood how the new Enigma cipher machine with four rotors worked. It was then possible to decipher the U-boat ciphers again, and as a result, nearly 100 U-boats were sunk between January and May 1943. In May 1943, while 41 U-boats were sunk in that month alone, damage on the Allied side continued to decline. On May 23, Donitz conceded defeat and ordered all submarines to withdraw from the mid-Atlantic. The German submarine fleet was unable to recover from this blow in what the Germans called the Black May. The U-boat countermeasures also operated effectively, and Britain survived the greatest crisis of the Great War. And as 1943 passed, the Allies were gaining the upper hand. The star of this achievement was the deciphering of the Enigma Code. When the war ended, Turing was awarded the Order of the British Empire for his cryptanalysis. If the U-boat Enigma had not been deciphered, and the war had continued for another two or three years, tens of millions more could have been killed. It is said that Bletchley Park's extensive cryptanalysis work, especially the deciphering of the U-boat Enigma, prevented an even greater loss of life, and shortened the war in Europe by two to four years.